It's really great being here at the Student Union and thank you for having me. Um, I'd like to ask you, Luke, how do you feel about education at Imperial? Well, it's an absolute pleasure uh, from us that you're here with us, Simone. Thank you for coming. Um, if I had to describe uh, the education at Imperial in one sentence, it would be that um, there are pockets of excellence which we really embrace, but there are also areas of weakness. So there are things which we can still improve, in my opinion. Yes, yeah, so the, the best thing about the education here is that Imperial is world-renowned for our research. And I think the biggest draw to students, and the best thing when they are here, is the fact that they are being taught by leaders in the field. And I'm sure there are things that you feel need improvement. So uh, I think the thing that came out of the NSS was that assessment and feedback really need to improve here. We only had 62% satisfaction, which is lower than in 2015. Yeah, I think there is a lot that we can work on. Um, I think the basis is brilliant. There are lots of wonderful examples that can be disseminated larger. Um, one thing I think we really need to improve on is the way the actual teaching takes place. There's a lot of innovation that's also researched that we know helps students learn that we haven't implemented yet. Um, I, th I think you highlight another issue which we um, identified in the NSS which is that students feel that certain academics are too focused on their research and, and not enough on their teaching. So there's that, that discrepancy which we need to work on. But I guess what we'd like to ask you, Simone, is um, how can we you know, narrow that gap between research and teaching? Yeah, it's a really good question. It's a problem that plagues all ki many research-intensive universities because we're in the rankings, we're basically judged on our research and not so much on our teaching. So it's very seductive to focus very much on the research. But a lot of researchers love teaching and they need to have more space for that. So one of the things I want to do in the strategy is create space for innovation in teaching. Yeah, so I think the expectations of students have shifted. Uh, before, they'd be very happy with a, a really in-depth technical uh, understanding of their subjects when they graduate. But now they understand that in order to be successful, they need to have the skills that allow them to tackle new challenges as they arrive, yeah. but also blend in with uh, industry, with commercial, um, and they have the skills to be entrepreneurs. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I read somewhere not long ago that the majority of students that are studying now will be working in jobs that are not yet there in the real world, that will be invented yeah. over the next 30 years. So if we train you guys for something that's there now, it will be obsolete by the time you actually in the workplace. Exactly. How, how can you do knowledge-based teaching on knowledge that doesn't exist? Exactly, exactly. Um, and I think the, the Students' Union has uh, been a real exemplification of students as partners, the union working with college and we're so pleased that you've been so receptive to our NSS response recommendations and that we're now going to work together to, uh, to implement those changes. I think we need to have a clear strategy, so this coming year we'll be using, uh, together with you, to work on an innovation strategy. Um, but we also have a little bit of seed money available to us. There is an endowment um, from the president that we're going to be using for innovative teaching. Um, so we'll actually be giving people some money to explore and to experiment. And the best examples we can then use uh, on a wider scale within the college. So it's going to start right now. Well, we know that students have opinions. Like, we really hear it through the academic rep network. Um, and I'm sure they'll be really eager to get involved. And we're going to help them as a student union by feeding through the rep network. And we'll also be having an online consultation portal so they can share their thoughts on what teaching and learning should become in the future. Yeah, and I know that there's so many staff members who also want to tell us about their views and who want to help change things, who are already doing great stuff, but it needs to be shared with more people. So there's a huge amount of enthusiasm and it just, we just need to make sure it gets channeled into a coherent report. And I think by doing this with the students, we're really killing two birds with one stone in the sense that we're making it very explicit to those involved that there is an effort being made to really improve the education here and they're a part of that. So we don't, we don't then need to communicate the changes to students because they're naturally a part of the process anyway, yeah. which is really exciting in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And it does might make a massive change. This is going to be a transformation from the kind of old 20th century learning to the 21st century 
fourth industrial revolution sort of learning. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. a good way of putting it. Yeah. Now an imperial always wants to be in the forefront and I think we also need to be in the forefront with our education innovation and I really think we can. So thanks for this wonderful conversation and let's get to work. <laughs>